<laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here today. As we get closer to winter, I thought it was important to spend some time talking about the resources available to Vermonters to make their homes more energy efficient and help offset the higher energy prop, uh, costs we're facing. With inflation high and the high price of heating your home going up, it's critical we do our part to help Vermonters reduce their costs. Weatherization and increasing efficiency in homes is a key component of that. We're joined today by Peter Walk on behalf of Efficiency Vermont, Tim Perrin with Vermont Gas, and Commissioner Sean Brown at the Department for Children and Families. Uh, Commissioner Tierney is here as well to answer any questions you might possibly have. But they manage the programs that help Vermonters make efficiency upgrades to lower costs, and they'll be talking about them shortly. Our partnership with these organizations and others is important to help make sure Vermonters know the opportunities available to them. This year, we've launched a website that includes many programs managed by different state departments and community partners all in one place. That can be found at www.vermont.gov slash button up VT. On the page, you'll find dozens of links where folks can learn how to best conserve energy, get incentives to cover costs of efficiency upgrades, receive emergency assistance, and more. Here's a few examples of what you'll find, like getting up to 75% of your weatherization expenses covered, incentives to help cover the cost of replacing old inefficient wood stoves, rebates for energy efficient appliances, vouchers to cover up to 85% of the cost of installing pellet storage systems. Fuel assistance programs, helping some pay for part of their heating bills, and more. Again, there are so many programs out there, and it can be hard for people to navigate and find them all. Vermont.gov slash button up Vermont puts them all in one place. I've always been a big fan of weatherization because it's a win-win. That's why I propose and work with the legislature to secure tens of millions of dollars for these efforts this past legislative session. Not only does it reduce costs for Vermonters, helping make our state more affordable, but it also reduces greenhouse gas emissions. So with all that, I'll now turn it over to Peter Walk, a former member of my team, who's doing a great job at Efficiency Vermont to talk about all they're doing in this space. Peter? Good morning, everybody. Thanks for, uh, thank you, Governor, for having us here today. This is an important topic for us all to be considered as Vermonters are trying to figure out how to keep themselves comfortable, safe, and warm during this uh, heating season. With the, with the, with inflation the way it is, with geopolitics the way they are, the volatility of, of heating fuel costs has never been more of a concern for Vermonters. And we partner across the state with, with the partners you see behind us trying to figure out how to make it more affordable for Vermonters to save money on their fuel, to be warmer and more comfortable, and have better health in their homes. Um, as, as the governor mentioned, uh, this is a huge opportunity for us to address greenhouse gas emissions in the state. Over a th about a third of our overall greenhouse gas emissions come from the heating and cooling of our homes. Um, the Button Up campaign, uh, which has been part of Vermont's ecosystem for, for many years, is designed to bring awareness to the opportunities that Vermonters have to save money. We have many options through both Efficiency Vermont and Vermont Gas Systems uh, led programs. Uh, we have contractor-led programs. We have DIY programs. We can help with fuel switching to important technology like heat pumps and pellet stoves and other things. Uh, we have uh, virtual services where we can have, you can have a, a virtual home energy visit to have uh, a, a, an Efficiency Vermont expert walk you through what opportunities there are to save energy and save money in your home. I am really excited about the, um, the, the incentive structure that the governor talked about. If you're a moderate income Vermonter, there's an opportunity for you to save up to 75% 
of the cost of weatherization up to $5,000. Um, that is a huge opportunity to, to make what is a, is a costly upfront expense able to be afforded over time. We also offer low and uh, no income or no interest um, financing programs, opportunities for to partner with uh, different banking organizations around the state to, to make it possible to afford these types of uh, significant investments that are intimidating, can be challenging, can be scary on the upfront and on, on top of an already busy and hectic uh, day trying to, to, to work through the challenges of day-to-day -day life, weatherization can seem daunting. But we were here to help, give us a call. Um, the, the answer is ask me how to help button up. The, the answer is to call either us or Vermont Gas and we can help you walk through the options that are available to you. Um, I, wa I want to end on one note. The governor said that, that, that weatherization is a win-win. I would add a third win in that, in that it saves money, it lowers our greenhouse gases, and it has significant health benefits and overall comfort for the members of the, of the home. And so we're really working to try to make sure that all of those benefits are received by everybody and that we can find ways to uh, fund weatherization in a way that, that really addresses those, those key benefits. Really excited about the opportunity to get, I believe the total was $80 million of extra money in this, in this year that the governor proposed and the legislature appropriated, um, 45 of which is gonna go through our weatherization agencies um, to low income and $35 million, which is to go through Efficiency Vermont. We're really gonna really work hard to get that money out the door over the next few years. And then there is the Inflation Reduction Act uh, dollars that are there to follow uh, the, federal, the federal government as we work to figure out what the plan is for that to really keep um, those monies flowing and, and most importantly send the signal to the market to the contractors out there doing this hard and important work that they're that we're here as a key partner that the state is here as a key partner through all of this work in order to make sure that they build the workforce necessary uh, to carry out this important important work in people's attics and basements and crawl spaces and all over the place. So uh, with that, I will hand it off to Tim Perrin um, from BGS. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Governor Scott, for the opportunity to highlight the many benefits of comprehensive home weatherization. I'm Tim Perrin, and I'm the Energy Efficiency and Innovation Manager for VGS, also known as Vermont Gas. At VGS, we're focused on ways to help Vermonters use their energy most efficiently, which will reduce greenhouse gas emissions and cut down on heating bills. We all love fall foliage and the first snow of the season, but most of us don't love reaching to turn up the thermostat on that first cold day in October. Maybe it was this morning for many. Fortunately, there are many ways Vermonters can take steps to weatherize their homes to improve efficiency and save money this heating season. Now is a great time to button up. VGS is a committed partner in this work. Three decades ago, in 1992, VGS began assisting Vermonters to make their homes and businesses more efficient. Over the years, our team has completed 43,000 energy efficiency improvements with our customers. Fast forward to 2022, and we're working with our partners, like Efficiency Vermont, utilities, and area organizations to make choosing more efficient equipment and weatherizing your home easier than ever. Weatherization works. Vermonters who weatherize benefit from lower monthly energy bills, improved housing affordability, reduced greenhouse gas emissions, boosted health outcomes, and a more comfortable home. For many, it can be difficult to fit these types of projects into the average household budget. Thanks to generous incentives, weatherizing has never been easier or more affordable. As the governor mentioned, opportunities for moderate income households to tap into 75% of the project cost, up to $5,000, for qualifying weatherization improvements. In addition to this, VGS partners with weatherization agencies to assist customers under 80% of area median income with incentives that can cover up to 100% of the project costs for qualifying weatherization upgrades for those who most need to make these improvements. VGS works with a local credit union to provide 0% financing for up to five years, spreading out the cost of improvements over time. We're also excited to now offer on-bill financing through the Weatherization Repayment Assistance Program as another great option. 
Applying is easy. Visit www.vgsvt.com to learn about rebates and programs available today. You can request an energy evaluation or more information from the website. The state's climate action plan finds we need to weatherize 120,000 Vermonters' homes by 2030. At VGS, we want to help Vermont reach its goal, and we look forward to working with our customers to button up ahead of the heating season. Again, my thanks to Governor Scott and our state and federal partners who have worked together to increase funding for weatherization. These dollars are a direct investment in Vermonters that offers solid financial returns as we help reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. I'd now like to turn it over to DCF Commissioner Sean Brown for some closing remarks. Oh, thank you. I'd like to thank the governor for the opportunity to highlight some of the programs administered by DCF that support low-income Vermonters um, meeting their energy needs, um, reducing their energy needs, and then assisting if, if they experience a crisis um, during the winter. Um, we administer the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, it's known as Seasonal Fuel. It provides a benefit to um, Vermonters, low-income Vermonters, up to 185% of the federal poverty level, um, whether they heat with electricity, oil, kerosene, um, wood pellets or wood. Um, it provides a benefit and we um, provide about, meet about 35 to 40 percent of a home ener owner's um, energy need um, throughout the winter. Um, we also administer through our partners with the community action agencies a crisis fuel program for uh, households, low-income households that experience uh, a no heat situation, they run out of fuel. Um, we can provide a, a minimum delivery of 125 gallons to help them out as well. Also, we partner um, with the Public Utility Commission, um, Vermont Gas and Green Mountain Power to administer a utility discount program. Um, Green Mountain Power um, provides a 25% discount um, to uh, low-income Vermonters and Vermont Gas provides a 20% discount. And so we administer those programs on behalf of those utilities. Um, so I encourage any Vermonter who is, has concerns, low-income Vermonter who has concerns about meeting their energy needs to reach out um, to DCF. You can either apply um, for our programs through our website or call our Benefit Service Center or visit one of our district offices um, located throughout the state or also they can visit one of our partners, uh, community action agencies who can also assist them in applying. Um, uh, we also administer some crisis programs. Um, so if someone um, experiences a no heat situation, their furnace um, uh, uh, stops working during the winter or they run out of fuel, they can um, visit a community action agency who we partner with uh, to provide that service. Um, if it's repairable, we will repair the furnace at no cost to the family. If it needs to be replaced, we will replace it at no cost to the family as well. Um, and we will always strive to provide a much more energy efficient model. And that heating, if it's, if it's their primary heating source, it could be a wood stove, it could be a heat pump, it could be an oil furnace. Um, a pellet furnace, we will repair or replace it with a, a, a more efficient model as we do that. Um, we also administer, to help households reduce their energy, we administer through our partners with our community action agencies, um, our weatherization program. And as uh, Peter Walk indicated, we are really scaling up that work. We received a $45 million investment um, from the governor and the legislature as a part of uh, the, the community uh, climate action plan work to reduce greenhouse gases. So we're really scaling up that program, and low-income Vermonters um, um, would enjoy the benefit of that program at no cost. We really go in and button up their home. We make it more energy efficient through weatherization, sealing cracks, um, service their uh, equipment if it's in, in, in good order. If it needs to be replaced, we'll replace it with more energy efficient models as well. And so it really reduces their energy need, makes their home more comfortable, in many cases makes it more healthy, the air quality uh, more healthy as well. And again, we partner with our community action agencies um, to administer that program. Um, and then also if um, they experience an issue with their fuel tank and it becomes red tagged because it's no longer safe. We also um, uh, provide a program that we will uh, replace fuel tanks at no cost to households as well. Um, 
and you know, and so visit Community Action Agency once again to access those programs. Um, and I'd also say, given the amount of work that's happening in the space, um, our, all of our community action agencies are hiring. Um, this is a great opportunity for someone starting out um, in, um, in this work, or if someone who wants to change careers, um, we have all sorts of positions available. And please reach out to us or our Office, and office of Economic Opportunity, and we're happy to connect you uh, with a provider in, in your area where you live, and we will try to get you uh, hooked up and, and on the job as quickly as possible. So thank you, and I'll turn it over to Governor for questions and answers. Questions, at least. Maybe answers from you. <laughs> um, we'd be happy to take any questions at this point. Yes? Um, I wonder what kind of assistance is available to folks who rent to want to rent, whether as their home or permits? If, they're a low sure. if, if they are a low-income Vermonter and qualify, you're, you can either be a homeowner or a renter. Um, to have uh, receive weatherization services, so it is available to renters as well. How does that work? That, that assistance then goes to the property owner. And then yes, we work with the landlord to ensure that that unit will stay affordable and accessible to, to low-income families moving forward. Or once we make that investment. Yeah, tied to public money. Well, they can switch uh, the types of fuels they use. Um, some are going, we have a pellet um, stove program to replace uh, their pellet stove or the other wood stoves that are uh, somewhat antiquated, inefficient. So that's one way. Um, even uh, larger scale, I, I think uh, some have uh, gone to pellet stoves and, uh, and, and pellet systems, uh, biomass type of pellet systems. So there are a number of different uh, initiatives uh, you can contemplate as you try and make your homes more efficient and uh, less costly. Uh, Peter, you had mentioned a sort of like virtual um, visit. What is, can you go into some more detail about that? And Sure. I mean, it's something we launched during the pandemic when people didn't necessarily want somebody to come into their home. And as an opportunity for, you know, I, I think we all go through this as, as in our own homes where we try to figure out where do I start? How do I begin this process? What, it, what should it look like? And it extends beyond heating fuel use. It extends to appliances and light bulbs and all these things. And where should I start? Like, I know my energy costs are high, where should I start? And that's a good place just to have a conversation with an expert about where to start. And then that could lead to something like a home energy audit where somebody comes in and does a blower door test in your home and finds out where there are, are leaks and where air sealing needs to occur, where there are opportunities for either uh, uh, first time insulation or more insulation in an attic or a basement. Um, and other places like that. So uh, the virtual home energy visit is just something to get started um, that could lead to other things down the road. Is that like a Zoom? Is that like a FaceTime? I, I, I believe it's, we do it via, I can't, I'm not sure what the platform is, okay. but it's, yeah, something same like, like, like Zoom, yeah. And then um, like how would someone sign up for something like that? Or? So the best thing to do is to give us a call uh, at Efficiency Vermont. Um, you can go to our website um, and start the process that way and we can uh, get in touch and, and set that up. Sure. Uh, so what we have, we've actually been, you know, over the course of time, Vermont has been a leader in this space of thinking about how uh, you think about what the benefits are to health. And we've actually had, um, you know, I think of a pilot that was done in, in the Rutland area with the Rutland Regional Medical Center, where they prescribed weatherization for folks who suffered from chronic uh, respiratory diseases because they're warmer, their air is, 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 Pressure. It deals with some of the moisture issues that causes concerns, um, and so it, there are there are a number of benefits, and that's an opportunity to to as we think about uh, weatherization as an energy savings, as a greenhouse gas, and as a health tool. Uh, those combined benefits are amazing in what they're capable of offering. If we then rather than looking at them individually. Governor, are you concerned about the, uh, brought up the issue of, uh, of needing some folks to come in and uh, 
do some of the weatherization work or the heating system work, but are you concerned that that's across the board? I mean, everything from drivers of fuel trucks to, you know, to service? Yeah, <clears throat> as, you, uh, as you are probably well aware, uh, the workforce challenges we face in the state of Vermont are across all sectors, this one including, uh, whether it's weatherization itself, or whether, as you mentioned, just delivery of fuels and, and technicians to come in and repair systems and so forth, electricians. Uh, again, it's across the board. That's why I've been so focused on uh, CTE, career technical education, uh, trying to bring more of our youth into the, to the trades because it is a lucrative career and uh, we need more of them. But it's, a, again, it, it isn't just the trades, it's, uh, it's law enforcement, it's education, it's healthcare, uh, across even state government, throughout state government, we have, we have our challenges in terms of uh, workforce needs. Do we know how much may be allocated um, for lighting for Vermont this year? We do, there was another, um, I, I don't know if that's passed yet, but uh, Senator Leahy was successful in, uh, I believe, at least including um, some more money. And does anyone know whether that passed yes, or not? Yes, it did. It did. Um, so we have a, um, a, a base block grant from the federal government of approximately $21 million. And Senator Leahy was able to insert a provision in the uh, consult uh, Appropriations Act that recently passed to continue funding the government, about which will um, Vermont will receive about 5.6 or 5.7 million more dollars on top of that 21, which certainly goes a long way because we were anticipating an additional need and the governor had approved additional state funds as a contingency and so we won't need to draw down as on much as, as much of those state funds to make sure we can maintain purchasing power in align with prior uh, year's average. Um, so last year, I think the state funds were million. Yes. Um, well, well, last year we certainly had a large yes with the uh, uh, ARPA funding, and that, that was certainly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Vermont. And we were able to leverage those dollars throughout the spring and uh, the summer to help Vermonters prepare. So we um, uh, normally provide the wood benefit in the fall, which is not the best time to be trying to dry, uh, purchase dry firewood. So we were able to. Uh, issue out uh, a substantial wood benefit for this upcoming winter um, this past spring. So allow Vermonters time to buy green wood or, or seasoned wood and, and let it uh, dry throughout the summer. And so we're able to re, you know, help Vermonters that way. And we were also for a, a, a set number of low income Vermonters, we were able to provide a preseason benefit of um, uh, about 6,000 households of 125 gallon um, benefit. So, yeah. No, I mean, so, and that's when I say the purchasing power. We always look at our caseload, the, the dollars available, and the cost of fuel to come up with a purchasing power calculation. And so we were trying to keep it within that 35 to 40 percent range, and, and we anticipate being able to do that this year. Although there is a significant volatility in the, in the heating oil market um, at, at the moment. I hate to bring it up, but are you guys worried about uh, possibly having a ration? or triage uh, the situation if, it's, if it gets that big? Yeah, we, we think we're in pretty good shape uh, here in Vermont at this point in time. Um, it's not as though we're not concerned because we always remain on guard and concerned because you never know what's going to happen. But uh, at this point in time, we feel as though we're pretty solid. Anything you want to add to that, Commissioner Tierney? I'll be glad to, yes. It, it's a good question to ask, but it's way premature. The issue isn't whether there's enough uh, commodity and the like to take care of our thermal needs. The issue is what it's going to cost. So we have what we need and we have access to more if it's needed. I, I won't lie to you, the region has certainly made headlines this fall because um, other states are concerned about this issue. But it's important to remember that in Vermont, a great deal of our power comes from the north, from Hydro-Quebec, so that's our electricity, and a great deal of our natural gas as well, all through Vermont gas systems from Canada again. So in that sense, we have a smaller slice of our energy pie that we have to worry about, 
And in that area, um, it's diversification that's really key. And to the question you were asking earlier about what people can do, they, if they set themselves up to where they have fuel diversity in their homes, meaning uh, a heat pump and, um, say, a propane uh, source or something like that, they then have the ability to, to switch from one to the other as needed. And this implicates you know, other policy questions about what we heat with in the state and why it's advisable to have diversity. The other thing that really shouldn't be overlooked is personal behavior. You know, if, if you're concerned about your fuel costs, say your, your gas for driving your car, uh, try to eliminate your trips. If you're concerned about um, therm, you know, the warmth of your home, uh, consider the extra layer. Th those are things that you can do even if you get into a rationing situation. But I'd really like to emphasize that's way premature and not on our horizon right now. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, uh, the, the governor mentioned uh, uh, these antiquated wood stoves. Are you, you know, the grid is, grid people are saying there's a possibility, worst case scenario, of a blackout, of at least temporary blackouts. In which case, the propane heaters, et cetera, they're all electrically powered, they might not work so well. So should we be swapping out our wood stoves, our old-fashioned, off-grid, low-tech wood stoves, just for diversity in case of emergency? I think some of those would be swapped out for pellet stoves. Um, it's just a different type of wood um, processing, but, uh, but I think that's part of the program that we had included. Aren't most of those also use some sort of electric um, yeah. starter or whatever? Some, some do, some are hand uh, fed, uh, but, uh, but yeah, some of them do. But it is important, I mean, it's an important question. I, I've talked about this before. Uh, we're not going to switch to uh, complete electricity overnight, and we have to make sure that we have the grid there uh, to support that, or microgrid, or whatever we're going to have. We need more storage, battery storage throughout the state uh, to bring, uh, be able to bridge that gap uh, in, uh, in a lot of cases. So uh, this is something that we all have to contemplate and be honest and open and transparent and, and uh, get to where we want to go. I still believe that it's the right approach, uh, but, but again, I think large scale battery storage, microgrids, is going to be some of the uh, the answer in the future. Anything else? No, Governor, that was a good answer. Okay. <laughs> Anything, do, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, Governor, this is kind of off topic, but how do you think that the cannabis market will is going? Do you have any concerns? Um, well, as you know, I, I had concerns in the beginning. I want to make sure that we have uh, Roadside safety is a concern. Um, edibles, kids, so forth, that's a concern. Uh, and I think that the Cannabis Control Board is uh, doing their part to make sure that it's, uh, everything is measured and that they are doing their part to, to be sure that it's rolled out uh, effectively. So, so far, so good. Um, I don't know. Again, we'll see. Uh, I, I know a lot of folks were counting on uh, tremendous income as a result. We'll, we'll see if that comes to bear or not. I guess I'll stay off topic for a minute. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the next election cycle, should you be governor anyway, uh, we have two new federal representatives coming in. Uh, there are going to be two that are on the list. We have to be able to uh, leverage uh, Senator Lady's seniority. So are, are you concerned that uh, maybe that federal well might dry up a little bit? Absolutely. Um, Senator Leahy has been, seniority is a big part of, of what happens in Washington in Congress. Um, he has a lot of longevity there and a lot of power, and he's been very, very um, helpful uh, to our state. Um, so um, it would be, um, It'd be foolish to think that uh, we would be able to replicate that with uh, a junior a senator with no um, with no years of, of experience or longevity in the in the Senate in particular. Um, so that's um, again, we're grateful for all he's done, um, but there will be a void, I believe, in the future. That's why we have to 
really think about how we uh, appropriate money um, because some of the, the money that Senator Leahy was able to uh, get appropriated to Vermont won't be there, um, possibly. And um, so we're going to have to tighten our belts a bit, live within our means, and do things like weatherization uh, to cut down on the costs uh, for Vermonters. It is not, well, the, the only part that is connected is the, the proceeds from Wheels for Warmth uh, goes to the um, like Capstone and CBOEO and, and Brock and Rutland, and, uh, and they uh, utilize that money, the proceeds, uh, for fuel assistance. So it helps in that way, but not directly um, connected. Which one? The Wheels for um, It's been a successful program over the years. It really is one of those. Uh, it's all volunteer driven. Um, it accomplishes a, a number of different uh, areas, whether it's to take, uh, take tires that are still usable uh, and get more use out of them. Uh, it provides uh, you know, good, safe tires to those families who can't afford to buy new ones. Uh, it takes them out of the waste stream as well because they get recycled. And, uh, and then, as I said before, it uh, provides fuel assistance uh, to those in need. So it's a, it's a great program. Um, we'll see how it goes, uh, but it's been, over the last 12 or 13 years, it's been successful. And it's not just you can't measure it in monetary ways because it has some, the ripple effect is so great. But, one of those that, um, again, all volunteer driven, so it's a, a good, effective program. Um, Governor, there are 1,555 as of last night. Fuel tank owners on the red tag replacement list. Uh, have any tank owners, to your knowledge, been refused fuel service if their tanks are not compliant? And, and in general, how's, how's that working out? Yeah, uh, again, when they are red tagged, and maybe Sean can explain this further, but when they're red tagged, uh, I believe there is a means for them to get a small uh, um, allotment of fuel uh, to keep them going, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but there are programs within uh, state government to, to help them replace those tanks because what happens is uh, they have leaks uh, and they, uh, or they, uh, look to be uh, in dire straits and uh, may cause contamination uh, as well as uh, loss of fuel, which is costly to the homeowner. So it's a, uh, it's a good program to have, but again, the, the downside is uh, folks need uh, some help in replacing those tanks as well. Anything you want to add to that? No, that was great. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you all very much.